Hey everyone, it's Pearlescent Toys back in today's video with another Marvel Legends action figure review from the Strange Tales wave. And here today we have Dracula or Dracula as the kids are calling him. Is anyone calling him that? No. Really cool to have this in hand. Dracula was a big player in the Blood Hunt storyline that took place this year. Here's a look at the side art. Man, he's just looking. It's just 1,000 aura right here. Wow, what a chad. And the back of the box. The legendary vampire Vlad Dracula rules over the undead, spreading violence and terror on his quest for power. All right, but without further ado, let's get into the review. Dracula made his debut in Marvel Comics in the Tomb of Dracula issue number one in April of 1972. This figure's appearance is far-fetched from his original design and is based on his current design in the comics. Let's kick things off with the sculpt and the paint apps as always and starting with the feet and I want to say a lot of this is brand new because I've never seen these pieces used before in the line. You could just see the armor right here how detailed it is look at all the sculpt work there's like damage and dents all throughout the shins i love the layers as always you know with this like sort of medieval knightly aesthetic going down each segment of the armor has a spike sticking out including the heel down here i think that is just such a neat touch and there's even one on the back of the heel those layers continue onto the foot right here no damage on the very last part right there as you can see but through these parts you can see more dents more sculpt work i'm going up to the knee pads and it's the same thing you see lots of scratches lots of dents and three spikes sticking out and i love how it folds up and then goes down and then like that it, it, it like it kind of reminds me of like a bat wing <laughs> you get it because he's a vampire Blah, blah, blah. And we get that same pattern, that same design choice up here on the legs with the paint. See the red sort of dips in and out, sort of like a bat wing. And it's even on the back of the leg as well. Oh my god. And then we get up to this chest armor and my god, it looks amazing. I love, again, more dents, more scratches. I love the layers throughout the armor. You got these little thingies right here. I actually looked up what the name of them were for my Doctor Doom uh, Cabal three pack review, but I <laughs> I freaking forget what they're called. Uh, J uh, JP, while you're editing this, just leave it on the screen. Yep, I was. Yep, that was on. It was on the tip of my tongue. I, that's what I meant to say. Those pieces are sculpted in a silver plastic. You can see a little bit of marbleization in there, but I think that works to the figure's benefit because, you know, this armor is meant to be medieval. It's supposed to be uh, not super ancient, but like really, really old. And around the breastplate right here, and as well as with the other armor pieces, you have a raised edge and that continues all across and that continues on the back as well. You get some plates for each of the shoulders and that goes down and even more layers and yeah, just you could see it in the light all the sculpt work going all throughout it just looks phenomenal and for that cape too i love the tattered edges at the very bottom all throughout the cape you get some sculpt work that really conveys that clothy texture really well there's this little piece dangling off to the side right here. And all of that tucks in underneath that breastplate. And then we go to the arms. And again, I can't really tell if these are reuse or not. I haven't seen these used for any other figures. So it leads me to believe that they are brand new. The bagginess of the arms. I love that. You know, I like how it's not all just skin tight leotard. You have some bagginess up here. And I think it looks great. And it all tucks in underneath his gauntlets and his gloves spikes layers yeah and the sculpt work e continues even there Ooh, and on the gloves too you have like some segments right there like for the armor you get those knuckles and then for the fingers and down to the claws for the fingertips right there i'll go over that more in the accessories portion i think it looks great as well all right now let's go over the accessories starting with his neutral head sculpt the paint apps around the eyes and the eyebrows look splendid. You know, it looks 
lifelike. I just love this facial expression. It's neutral, but it just has so much anger behind it. It looks great. Love the yellow pupils. It just looks super spooky. And I love the wrinkles above the eyes on this forehead and around the mouth and nose. These big old earrings hanging down from his ears and the pointed tip of the ear as well. The hair looks great as well as it has some gray dry brushing all throughout. It gives the hair a bit of depth and makes it pop out even more. The ponytail. I think it is so cool that they made it articulated and you're able to spin it around. He also comes with this head sculpt. I want to suck your blood head sculpt. Dude, it's incredible. It, I think this is like in the running for the best head sculpt of the year because it just looks so incredibly gnarly. I love his fangs. Oh my god, how big they are. And the depth of the mouth too, how deep it goes insane it is such an insane head sculpt and it's not just the mouth that looks phenomenal it's the rest of the face as well i love the furrowed expression just the muscles just wrinkling up around the eyes that angry expression the eyebrows and the eyes combined dude it's just a ghastly head sculpt it looks great perfect for dracula and again you get those earrings and those pointed ears and again with the hair Gray dry brushing makes it look great. And this ponytail is a lot more flayed out like for your action poses. So you're able to have it like in the wind. Dude, it's such a dynamic head sculpt. I absolutely love it. Now, a really cool feature about this figure is that you're able to actually swap these ponytails out. So you could have this right here, just the neutral ponytail on the angry expression. And you can also have the dynamic ponytail like flowing through the wind on the neutral head sculpt he also comes with two fisted hands again love the sculpted detail on both of these you could, and you could see even more of that on his alternate hands the open seeger pan and a wide open hand some more sculpt work some more damage onto the claws as well oh my god this looks so sick what isn't sick is that this is all you get for hands so again mismatching pair of hands Hasbro, please stop doing this, please. Anyways, for the final accessory, he comes with a sword, and I think it looks great. The sculpt of it, silver plastic, and very pointy too. Now, going over articulation, the head is able to move up this much. It is able to look down that much. He does have pivot and some side-to-side -side movement, and as stated earlier, the ponytail is articulated, being able to spin all the way around. His arm is able to move this far out to the side and is able to go all the way around. He has upper bicep swivel. He has a single jointed elbow that's able to bend in this much. And that too has rotation at the top of the wrist. And he has your standard wrist hinge being able to move this far down, this far up and move all the way around. With his single diaphragm joint, he's able to bend this far back and go forward this much. He has some pivot right there and some side to side movement as well. His leg is able to kick up this much, go out to the side that much, and go back a tiny decent amount. He has upper thigh swivel, a double jointed knee that's able to bend back that much. He has rotation at the top of the ankle, and his foot is able to move this far down, this far up. And he has a couple, 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 couple. And for size comparisons, here is Dracula next to Blade the Vampire Hunter and Morbius, Helverine and Bloodstorm, Deadpool and Hydra Bob. Deadpool and Hydra Bob, Darwin and Morbius, Gary and CT4279, Grogu and Sad Freakin' Rollins, and finally, Jeff the Landshark and Spider-Ham. Alright, time for my final rating and my overall thoughts. I'm going to give Dracula here a final rating of 9.5 out of 10. I'm going to give him a 9.5 out of 10. Just a superbly well done figure. Superbly a word? It is now a superbly well done figure and one that I just absolutely love to death. The articulation is so smooth. It feels like a dream moving this guy around and those head sculpts are to die for. Uh, you get it because he's he's undead. I, I don't know. I don't think that one really worked. Anyways, yeah, just the sculpt of everything, you know, down to the armor, the head sculpts, the hands even the accessories like it just looks so 
well done. I love the ponytails too, the feature where it's able to rotate and you're able to swap them out to one aspect holds this back for me, those alternate hands. Why can't we get matching pairs of hands anymore, Hasbro? Why? That's really the only reason why it's down to nine and a half. Definitely my favorite of the wave so far. But yeah, that'll do for today's video. Comment down below what you would rate this figure out of 10. I'd love to see your guys' opinions. And while you're at it, please like and subscribe and share with a friend. Anything you can do that'll support the channel will be greatly appreciated. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. Excuse me, Jesus, that's one for the blooper reel. Hey guys, <laughs> that's my vampire noise. That's that's my vampire noise. Ah, Jesus Christ, the booty is ancient, but <laughs> hey, it's uh, it's still slaying. That well, what am I even saying right now? Well, a single jointed elbow that's able to bend in a really good amount, and that too does not have swivel. Never mind. Oh man, that was awful. Oh, excuse me again. Um, I think I threw up a little there. What am I doing with my life?